pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So the Tri-Creek School Corporation of Students, Staff, and Community endeavors to be a recognized leader for high achievement and exceptional growth, innovative and equitable approaches built upon strong community pride, and provide all students with well-rounded educational experiences to prepare for future successes, engaged to learn, equipped to achieve, empowered to succeed. Alrighty. Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys for coming. Alrighty. First off, uh, is there any uh, additions or deletions to the agenda? None? Alrighty. Alright, I don't have any public comment for agenda related items. And Three Creeks Elementary School Spotlight presentation. Mr. Nanaga? Is that your fan club? This is my fan club. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for all the thanks to all the Three Creeks families that came out tonight to uh, support your kids. We're really proud of them. Um, thanks to the board for allowing us to come and, and present to you tonight. Uh, we're really proud of our school. Um, so we're going to start out with a presentation on our school improvement plan. Um, and then we will move on to recognize some of our students for their achievements. So, start with Mr. Lamb. Okay, about us. So, at Three Creeks, we have 519 students, 31 teachers, and 26 students. Uh, 29.54% free and reduced lunch for an elementary school and we're considered rural fringe. We're going to talk about three goals tonight, three school improvement goals um, that we're working towards at Three Creeks. Um, the first two are academic goals and the third is, is related to attendance. So the first uh, is centered on English and language arts. Our goal of Three Creeks by spring 2023 is for the percentage of students in grades three through five scoring at or above proficiency in English language arts, high learning assessment will increase from 53% to 60%. That is our goal. Um, before we look at where we're at now, let's look at where we've been, actually how we, how we measure up, I'm sorry, to some other area schools. Um, so here we are with our 53.9% proficiency last year on um, English language arts. Um, compared to our district, slightly below our district average, our state average down here 41.2%. And then just for reference, I listed some other uh, region school corporations. So you kind of see where we fall in the mix. So 
So back, I wonder what this is. <laughs> <Go across. laughs> back to the dashboard, okay? So if you go to the uh, GPS dashboard, it's gonna show you this graph for English language arts proficiency. And what it means is uh, red and orange stand for students that were either below or approaching proficiency. And your light blue and dark blue are students that were either at or above proficiency. So we're, we're aiming to have all of our students either at or above proficiency. So to give you the numbers there, in 2019, we had 58% proficient. We did not take either in 2020. 2021, we did have a decrease to 48.5%. And then last year, we, um, we started on the incline again to 53.9% proficiency. So at this point of the year, the best predictor that we have as to where our students are gonna be by the end of the year would be NWEA. Uh, which our students take three times a year. So based on our winter NWEA benchmark, our goal, remember, is 60%. <laughs> Currently, we're at 56.5. Okay, that's the projection. So we are higher than we were at the end of last year. We've got some time left uh, to continue to address this goal and hopefully meet that 60% proficiency uh, or higher by the end of the school year. Uh, this would also be found on the GPS dashboard. This is students who have met their growth targets on iLearn over time uh, for English language arts. So going back to 2019, uh, we had 54.4% of our students met their growth target from one year to the next on the iLearn assessment. Skip 2020. And we had a significant drop, as you can see, when we came back in 2021 to 28% of our students meeting their growth goals. And last year, we, again, were on the incline again to 53.8%. So we value not only achievement, but we also value growth. So in order to measure that growth throughout the school year, again, we use NWEA as a predictor. And at the district level, we talked about wanting 70% of our students to meet their projected growth on NWEA. So looking at last year, um, here's kind of a breakdown by grade level of students from the beginning of the year to the end of the year that met their projected growth. So this year, from fall to winter, there's a comparison for you. Um, we're seeing quite a bit of improvement this year on students that are meeting their projected growth from fall to winter. Um, so our averages so far this year, last year 55% of our students met their growth from, kinder, or from uh, beginning of the year to the end of the year. So far, 61% of our students have met their growth targets from fall to winter. So an increase for sure, not to that 70% yet, still working toward it. So how, what, are we, what are we doing to meet the goal? Okay. Uh, so we have three strategies that we are really focusing on this year in, in order to improve our English and language arts proficiency and growth. The first of those is identifying and targeting specific focus areas for Tier 1 English language arts based on iLearn data from the prior school year. So Tier 1 is what's happening in the classroom for 100% of our kids. We want to look at, based on last year's data, what did everybody kind of struggle with and really focus on that. So grade level teams met at the beginning of the year to identify specific skills in need of attention based on iLearn standards based data. So just an example of what that would look like. From fourth grade, uh, our teachers were able to identify that the last two years, especially red is not, is not uh, desirable. Um, that was a standard that our fourth graders really struggled on uh, applying the writing process. So the teachers were able to kind of focus in on that area and say, what are we going to do this year to get our kids uh, to do better with the writing process? But every grade level did that with their specific data. And then grade level teams worked together to identify strategies to address those deficits. So going back to fourth grade again, this was the plan that they uh, had come up with. Uh, to kind of carry out through the year, modeling specific writing strategies. You can kind of read through that, but 
the, the key is that they identified the deficit and they came up with a strategy to address that deficit. Second strategy is implementing an effective data teaming process that includes analyzing assessment data for intervention and enrichment needs. So every Tuesday, uh, we have what we call professional learning communities after school, where all of our teachers are in the same space in the library, looking at assessment data and uh, analyzing it and answering four questions, okay? Four questions we always want to answer are what do we want all of our students to know and be able to do? How will we know if they learn it? How will we respond when some students don't learn? And how will we extend the learning for students who are already proficient? So our teachers are continually looking at new assessment data, answering those same questions, cycling back, seeing how the kids did after they have you know, either retaught or enriched uh, a certain skill. And the final strategy, supporting and support and intervention activities applied to students that aren't responding to tier one ELA instruction. That looks like small group instruction in the classroom for targeted skills, scheduled intervention groups, that's our Title I program, to reteach and pre-teach skills, use of mind play as a research-based reading intervention, and long-term goal setting and progress monitoring for students who need individual support at the tier three uh, level. Continuing on, our second goal is for mathematics this year. Uh, similar to the ELA goal, okay, we're trying to increase proficiency. So last year we were at 64%. This year we're trying to get to at least 71%. Us compared to other schools in the area. <laughs> Well, I took the same schools from the other one. We just happened to be higher up this time. <laughs> uh, so Three Creeks Elementary School, uh, in comparison to the state, okay, state 39% math average on iLearn, okay, we were at 64%. Okay, some other area schools there. Um, so yes, we were, in comparison, doing better some, to some other schools, but we compare ourselves to ourselves, and we want to get better than ourselves every year. So. Looking at that, uh oh, what's that for? Uh, so on the dashboard again, math, we're talking math now. 2019, 61% proficiency, skip 2020. 2021, 55% proficiency. Last year, 64% proficiency. Our goal this year, 71%. Based on NWEA so far this year, our projection, 73% this year. So, we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. We'll keep that up. We'll talk about strategies in a minute. Growth over time, so students that are growing, meeting their growth goal in 2019 for math, 54.4%, skip 2020. 2021, 24.2%. That same trend uh, when we're out of school for a year, kids don't grow as much. Uh, 2022, we're back up, okay? 58.6% of students met their growth goal. Okay, if we look at our, our NWEA data, the students, our, our goal again is that 70% of our students are gonna meet their projected growth goal on NWEA. This is last year. Just want to look side by side again, last year to this year. So if you look there, we've got a market improvement in several areas of students that are meeting their growth from fall to winter in comparison to fall to spring last year in our averages. So we're, we're, looking, we're looking good. Okay, we're using the same strategies um, but applying them to math as far as uh, improving our math growth and achievement. So again, we're looking at specific areas, grade level teams, looking at iLearn data from last year, identifying a specific standard. So here's a fifth grade example. They saw, oh my goodness, the last three times our students really struggled with this specific skill. What are we gonna do about it? That's the next question. What are we gonna do about it? 
so they're going to identify strategies. Okay, that same that same grade level said, "Oh my goodness, our uh, everyday math curriculum doesn't even have much about this in it. We're going to need to expand upon that a little bit." So they extended one of their units and added that uh, skill in there um, to address that. Okay, strategy number two, same thing as last time, professional learning communities, looking at assessment data, answering those four questions. And strategy number three, similar, what are we doing for kids that aren't responding to tier one? Okay, we're getting them small group instruction, scheduled intervention groups, use of ASCEND uh, as a research-based math intervention, and again, long-term goal setting and progress monitoring for students who need individual support. Our last goal, attendance. So we set this goal at the beginning of the year that the number of chronic absentee students this year will decrease from 56 to 42. What is a chronic absentee student, you might be asking yourself. A chronic absentee student is, chronic absenteeism is the rate of students who are absent from school for at least 10% of the school year. It's important to note there for any reason. For any reason. Excused, unexcused, doctor's note, no doctor's note, um, death in the family, family emergency, all of these things play into that attendance rate, okay? So some of these things are in our control. Some of these things are out of our control. Um, but what are we gonna do about the things that are in our control is what we ask ourselves. Here is our historical attendance data over time, and this is on the dashboard again. These are students with a 94% attendance rate, so that's ideal, students that are attending 94% of school or more, okay? Uh, they're more likely to achieve better in school when you're in school more, it makes sense. Uh, so to 2018 to 2019 to 2020 to 2021, okay, those numbers right there might be like, what? I didn't think hardly anybody was going to school then. Uh, and that's because attendance was recorded a little bit differently during the pandemic. Um, students were counted present when they were virtual at times, so that's why some of those numbers are a little bit different. Last year, okay, back to somewhat of a normal year, but our attendance really plummeted at Three Creeks. 49.2% of students had at least a 94% attendance rate for any reason. So clearly something to be uh, looking at. I wanna give you guys some perspective um, on this in a few different ways. So first of all, if we were to look at the percent of students with a 94% attendance rate counting only the unexcused absences, things that people don't have a good excuse for, well, then 98% of our students would be at school 94% of the time. That sounds great, um, but that's not reality. We have a lot of other things that come up, too. So when you really look at every, everything students are absent for, excused, unexcused, okay, only 57% of our students have a 94% attendance rate so far this year. Looking back at our goal was to decrease the percent of chronic absentee students. And again, if we looked at just the unexcused absences, okay, how many of our kids have missed 10% of the school year so far uh, with unexcused absences only taken into account? It would only be three kids, okay? Again, that's, that seems pretty good, but if we take all of those other absences into account, all of those excused absences too, doctor's visits, sick days, all of those things, that number significantly increases. We've got 97 kids who have missed at least 10% of the school year so far. So it's something to be on our radar and addressing. Um, that's why I've invited Mrs. Worling and Mrs. Anderson tonight to talk about some of the strategies for addressing that. So I'm going to talk through three strategies. Going to dive in for you. Yep. So within our first strategy, what we're really focusing on is creating the type of environment where our students feel safe, 
where they feel comfortable and where they're encouraged to come to school. So one of the ways that we wanna do that is by giving our students opportunities from tier one, all of our students to tier three, where we're having individualized plans for students, opportunities for them to develop the skills and the mindsets that they need, not only to develop academically, but also to develop socially and emotionally while they're with us and in our communities. So one of the things that we've adopted school-wide this year, along with our other elementary schools in the district, is a social emotional learning curriculum. The particular one that we're using is called Second Step. This curriculum is aimed at helping students acquire skills, knowledge, mindsets needed to persevere through challenges, set and achieve goals, handle strong emotions, because those come up for our students, better understand and connect with others, and I would also add themselves there too, and resolve interpersonal conflict. So these are actually teacher-led lessons. The teachers are leading 20 lessons throughout the year using a digital curriculum. All of the resources are provided to them, so it's minimal planning time for them, which is a plus as a teacher. Those 20 lessons are built in across four different units, five within each unit. At the beginning of the year, we start with unit one, growth mindset and goal setting. Our kids here could probably tell you what that means. We move into emotion management, how kids can manage those strong emotions while they're at school. The unit that we're actually focusing on right now at school is empathy and kindness. And then the last unit that we will conclude in about April, early May, will be problem solving. So we also know that a standalone curriculum is not enough to really foster that environment. We need to have things embedded into our daily routine and our daily practices, those opportunities where we're building those relationships all of the time. So we supplement that with lessons that I might go into the classroom and do on a monthly basis. Those might tie into some of the school-wide activities that we'll talk more about. They might also correlate with different needs that we're having that are popping up at different grade levels throughout the year. Um, we're really excited when we are able to have community partners come in. Tomorrow, we're actually having one of our community partner-led collaborations. So the peer mentors at Lowell High School are actually gonna be divided up and they're visiting all three of the elementary schools and they're going to be delivering the lessons that correspond with our objectives and our empathy and kindness lessons. So we're really excited about having some TC Bears coming back um, and there'll be some students from Lake Prairie and Oak Hill that are excited to go back to their alma maters as well. But like I said, we know that we can't do those things standalone and we need to have other things embedded into the year as well. So I listed some of the annual things that we do on a school-wide basis, things from our kickoff at the beginning of the year, which we have a few photos on the next slide, to our Friday morning singing and dance alongs. Our kids here are probably pretty familiar with how upbeat and positive that is on a Friday morning when you come to school. Our music teacher has some music playing in the hub and everybody's just really kind of getting pumped up and celebrating the week that we've accomplished together and the weekend coming up too. So these are some of the pictures that I talked about with some of those events. In the middle, you'll see some of what was related to our kickoff for the year. So we always try to have a theme for the year, something that we can benchmark and come back to. So this year we happen to focus on unleashing the superhero in you, really focusing on the fact that we all have strengths and attributes that we can use to help ourselves and to help others in our school community. Um, this has become one of my most favorite parts of the year. The past couple of years, as a part of our kickoff, we have started doing a school-wide parade. So in the individual classes, students will focus on a word for the year. In this case, it was a superpower for the year. So as a class, what is one superpower that you're going to focus on that's going to help your classroom family be successful in their goals for that year? And then strategy two, this one is more focusing on accountability and shared responsibility when students are having a difficult time getting to school. And when I think about shared responsibility here, I think about what we can do as a school in partnership with what families can also be doing to support their students. So at the core of that is really focusing on building a positive relationship with our students and their families. 
because that definitely becomes important when we do have students that are reaching that chronic absenteeism rate or they're just not getting there for some reason or another. Oftentimes through those targeted points of contact that we're having, that's where we're learning about those underlying reasons that they're not getting to school. Sometimes there are medical needs and if we know about them and can plan together, we can set up opportunities in our nurse's office for some of those needs to possibly get met or medications or different things to be monitored at school. We also sometimes might find out that anxiety or a mental health condition is playing into that. So we will set up different plans for students that help them meet those needs. We've conducted some home visits this year when students have been having a hard time getting to school. Parents will call us and they will say, hey, so I cannot get so-and-so in the car today or they're really struggling today. And we might talk to them on the phone or go out and visit the student at their house, develop that plan so they know what that's going to look like when they come to school. And then we drive and the parent follows us and then we meet them right at the door and get them on in to start their day. We feel really fortunate and blessed with the partnership that we have with Behavior Specialists of Indiana. We've had that partnership for the past few years and we really feel like that's enabled us to support more students and families. So one of the things that that partnership has allowed us to do are some small group for students. They're running some groups for students with anxiety, for example, through their music therapy program. Um, they also sometimes help our students start their day in our Bears Den, which is a regulation room that students can go to when maybe they are having some strong emotions and they need somewhere alternatively to start their day rather than a general education classroom. We're also doing schedule adjustments for students. Maybe they need check-ins throughout the day. Maybe they need that peace of mind to be able to call a parent and check in just to know that they're okay or to know what their plan is for after school. And then of course, we're also trying to connect families to the resources that they need. Maybe that's supports through our partnership with BSI during the school day. It could be through Crown Counseling's um, school-based counseling program. It might be something that I provide with the students, connecting with outside agencies, whether that be for basic needs or anything else that they might need to help their students be successful at school. Our final strategy for addressing the attendance uh, and making the school a safe and positive environment, Mrs. Anderson? So our third strategy is all about my favorite, PBIS. So PBIS is a school-wide system that encourages positive behaviors and also reinforces everything Chris had talked about with the SEL competencies. So our PBIS program was really revamped this past summer and rolled out to staff this fall. Um, there are a lot of changes this past year. So there's just a few listed there. Probably the most popular right now are the Bear Bucks. So I have some right here. Bear Bucks are distributed both individually and on a classroom basis. So they're distributed to those kids who are showing all of our Bears expectations throughout the day. Um, and then the next one there, monthly incentives, or locally called the monthlies, um, are events that students pay to play, basically. So they're between 10 and 15 bear bucks, and they happen towards the end of the month, and anybody can come. So we really want, our goal at the beginning was all kids every month. So they really work towards those monthly experiences. Um, and then there's a couple pictures there. So that last one was an igloo building contest, um, also incorporating STEM. Underneath there was our pumpkin painting party, and one of our SROs joined in, so that was fun. Um, and going off what Chris has said about our community partnerships, in December, Sylvan Learning came in and, and sponsored an ice cream social for our kids. So that was really great to have them come in. Um, additionally, we have our monthly Super Bears, and those are our latest Super Bears under there. Um, to earn Super Bear status for the month, you are just exemplifying what we want to see in the so you are that role model, you are trusted, you are that kid who is just on it consistently. And we know that that's, that's hard to do, right? Um, from there, students get a menu of, of experiences that our staff has provided. So we're trying to go towards less tangibles and more experience-based to help build that relationship with teachers and other staff. 
So that could be anything um, from like having lunch with a teacher to playing catch with a teacher to nail painting with me, um, spa day with Mrs. Whirling. So there's a lot to choose from, um, and that it's really great to see staff meeting kids that they wouldn't normally interact with. Um, we also do surprise raffles. So on a random Monday morning, we'll pick three of those experiences. Kids will drop in bear books throughout the week, and Friday they pick, we pick a name and they bring a friend and have a new experience. Um, we've also updated our behavior tracking system to include Google Forms. It's just a more expedited way to get to me um, and Mr. Nanaga if necessary. And then probably one of the best parts of our PBIS system is our peer mentor program. So this was something that we piloted last year with just a couple of our peer mentors. And it's really expanded this year to include 18 students. So tonight, we've invited our peer mentors here. Do you want to do that now? Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the new lineup. Austin Coyne, Julia Gregan, Brooke Lavalli, Emmanuel Navarro, Ava DeBoer, Ali Cochran, Matthew Mishlove, and Peyton Jones, Free Creeks Peer Mentors, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a mentor at Three Creeks to a fourth grade student. I enjoy it a lot. It is not all about helping, it is also about making a new friend and maybe inspiring others to become a mentor and help others. because I can let kids have a safe place while helping them and learn to focus. Believe it. Believe it or not, mentoring can teach me a thing or two as well, so it is a great experience for me and my mentee. We are so proud of you guys. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you guys. We're going to have you guys transition off back to your seats, and we're going to welcome one more group tonight. You guys want to have a seat? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Three Creeks Championship Spell Bowl team. Let's have our coaches, Kate Hazer and Allison. Team members, Hannah Chepiga, Charlotte, Charlotte Pace, Chase Austin, Austin Vandermeer, Annie Becker, Alice Runchy, Sophie Cousmas, Connor Chandler, Cameron Meyer, Addison Latula, Savannah Galley, Savannah Wilson, and Vincent Sheevish. So notably, uh, we are the only elementary skull bowl team in Tri Creek, and these guys went to their area competition and they rocked it. They got first place, so nice job, guys. The coaches are here to share a little bit about the season. Is there anything you guys want to say? Yeah, um, we had our competition in November. It was just an area competition, but we did place first place for our region or our uh, district, so that was super exciting. They worked super hard ever since October to get to that point. Um, anything you want to share? Um, not only did we work very hard, but we had fun while we did it. We did have fun. Um, I am very important. proud of all of them. Um, one of our favorite things to do at practice is play spiteful. 
So we thought it might be fun to do a little round of sparkle. Are you guys up for it? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you give that list to Mr. Mitch? Mr. Mitch. Okay, you guys can go ahead and circle up like you do for sparkle. We haven't studied these words since November, so no big deal, guys. But go ahead and pick, <laughs> pick any word. And uh, Vivi, why don't we start with you? Okay. Pick any word? Any word. Any word. Any word. There's 750 of them, I think, so pick any. Athlete. Athlete, Vinny, go ahead. A. H. L. Wait, what was the word? Athlete. Next word, Mr. Mitch. All right. Citizen. Celery? E. L. A. Close. Good try. E. R. Y. Sparkle. Ability. Angel. A N E L. Sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, do you guys have any questions for us, Three Creeks? I know this went longer than. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. You, it was you know why? I just want to. I want to point out our vision statement that we read. Recognized leader for high achievement, we saw that. Exceptional growth, we saw that. Innovative and equitable approaches built upon strong community pride. I would say we're pretty proud of that. And well-rounded educational experience. You had academic, the sense of community, and obviously team building. So we have well-rounded kids. So thank you for fulfilling the vision of our district and Great job, and thank you for coming tonight. Thanks, guys. Thank you. It's a good work on that. How are you going to say? Can you tell? Yeah, be juicy. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you all. Yeah, please, uh, why don't we take a moment? You feel free to exit. Um, they probably have homework and yeah. homework. In bed. <laughs> this may not uh, help your attendance rate. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming. person is. We're trying to figure out the sparkle. Oh, so if you, the letters of I end with E, then Katie would say sparkle, and then it's out, then that's the end of the word. You say sparkle because that's the end of the word, like you know there's no other letter. Oh, I see. And then it would be out. It's the kids What do you say? Okay. Of course I was. It's almost like the selling version of War or whatever. Around the world. Hey, 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 hey. Attention, attention, here. No. <laughs> He's like, I bet that. What was that? <laughs>
All right. Um, Superintendent's report. Yeah, so we had a concern or a report of some student injuries on our playgrounds. And uh, I know Dana and Jason Watson, Buildings and Grounds, have already gone out, um, got some price estimates, and we plan to just fix that problem. Excellent. Is that going to be something you're going to leave out there all the time, or is it something like during recess you'll pull it in so it doesn't get vandalized? Um, so we're looking for a pad that, um, for example, is tall enough, weather durable, and something that kids would not be encouraged to vandalize. Is that sum it up, Dana? Correct, yeah. And I've asked Jason to look at the vandalism that we've had over the recent years. One incident in the last, I'm going to say, four or five years. So, okay. um, I'm knocking on wood as I say That's that, um, because that was a concern when we looked at those. Um, they're similar to what you would see on our goalposts out there. Um, four inches thick, uh, minimum is what we're looking for around mm -hmm. there. Uh, six feet if you can with the pole. Um, most likely, in, in some cases, we can only get a four foot length. But you can lift it up a little yeah. bit too, so yeah. it's not you know a foot or two off the ground. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're on it. We're working on it, um, and we hope to have those installed as soon as we can get them. Excellent. Yeah, thank you guys for getting on top of that. That's quick turn. Yes. They're either playing too intense or clumsy, but either way, <laughs> <laughs> staff and toys in the family. So you know what I I will tell you. <laughs> as I've acclimated as in the superintendency, there would be times that members of the board will reach out and say, whatever. And I, um, in your first reaction would be, it's defensive, like, <laughs> I'm sure we're on it. But over the course of time, I've come to really appreciate the reports, because you're the eyes and the ears, you see it, and I, we may not see things, and you do, so when you report stuff like that, it's actually a good thing. Yeah, it's not a gotcha. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because that's the first mechanism to defend, and so, anyway, thanks for the team effort. And, and again, if we see something, it's our right, I'm not right, but it's our obligation to make sure you're aware of it. Yeah. More than likely you already are. It's not intended to be malicious in any way, I'm sure. Uh, we share that, and we just want to be messengers and bring information to you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I will say in this case, when Andy sent me the email that morning, um, Teresa sent, handed me my yellow folder of things to sign. I opened it up, and there was an incident report in there for this particular situation. So it was there. Yeah, and it's one of those things yeah. where people like will talk maybe to us more because they are like, mm -hmm. I don't want to make an issue of it, you know. And in this case, they weren't even asking. I just was like, you know, this has not happened to my son. Like that was not even to that level. But I'm sure that the kids are bumping into it here and there, and you just don't hear about it. You know, they go to the nurse, they get an ice pack, and move on. So. Yeah, I've never heard of any kid really getting that seriously hurt. Well, that, they're doing it. They're doing and it. And if they are, they do it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So thank you guys. You're welcome. Um, another thing I'd like to report on is we have several, we belong to several co-ops. So the most obvious one is our special education co-op that Nate sits on the board of. We belong to a, a trades a CTE co-op and another co-op that just met this week was our insurance trust. And so um, there are four school districts and I looked at uh, Dana, so she's been here forever. You're testing oh. my. I mean, compared to me, <laughs> um, uh, we've got Highland, uh, Gary, uh, it's uh, North Judson, and, and ourselves. Four schools that belong to a medical insurance co op, and that co op is what has afforded our insurance premiums to be rock bottom compared to other school districts which has saved us a lot of money it's based on claims the fewer correct the claims, the lower the rate. so just so that you know our employees who take our medical insurance they can go to any of the north shore clinics 
with zero copay. The clinics, most of them that you'll you'll see in Abstract Mantill, um, in three locations in St. John, Sherrillville, and Crown Point. But then there's a, a larger clinic in Merrillville, and then we also have clinics with North Shore over in Porter County. Um, their hours are conducive to staff. Most of them are open six days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And so by utilizing that, as well as we get prescription drug coverage at rock bottom prices. And Dana actually serves as treasurer for the organization. And I'll tell you, she is dynamite and she continues to push the envelope for even Brown and Brown, who is the, what would you call them, the, the broker. Uh, it, oh, we've never thought of looking at the, the financials that in that manner. And so I just wanted to report out, we met this week, Dana is doing a fantastic job and um, we're going to have a conference call this week about rock bottom premium um, and how we will probably have one of the lowest around again for the foreseeable future. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add. What I'd like to add is that for the CTE cooperative and for this cooperative for our insurance, um, TriCreek, our business office serves as the LEA. So we financially run those entities for the other schools. Um, and in doing so, uh, it gives us a first-hand approach and some a little more say in how those cooperatives function. Um, it is added work for our business department, but I see value in doing that because we're able to steer some of those conversations. We're able to um, bring about financial perspective that other school districts just get handed to them mm -hmm. as being a member of the cooperative. So I like to um, manage those things. It, it does you know, take on more on our plates and everything, but I see great value in that. So it's, um, we do that, which is different where the other school districts Again, just get those reports and mm -hmm. yes. So it is a positive. So yeah. I enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, You're good at it. Uh, so uh, Dr. Cleefish serves on the NYSIC uh, Board of Directors at the uh, co-op, and we are in search of a new director as the current one is retiring. Um, applications will be reviewed next week by the Superintendent's Advisory Council. So, um, just Did kind you of. Get a good number of them? Uh, there's a handful at the moment. Okay. Um, I will tell you, Tri Creek is trying to nudge that group to get going sooner than later. <laughs> because I believe a key to good hiring is to hire early. Yeah. You get your better candidates, you have better transitional time. And, and so um, that's what we're doing. March 7th at 7 is the next school town hall meeting and the topic is the operations referendum. And so that will be right here in the middle school cafeteria. Uh, construction update. So um, currently the architects are still looking at some renderings. They're still uh, figuring some pricing information. Uh, they're getting some soil samples at the moment and they, um, let's see, next meeting will be back for a presentation, um, an update on construction. I don't know if the, my colleagues have anything else to add. Um, <clears throat> Underground locates and uh, soil borings going on. So that's kind of the, uh, there is a Lake Prairie component with, with our uh, partnership with VPS and Leggett Architects and uh, uh, according to a, a call today, um, the schematics might be uh, close to 95%, I think is what I recall hearing them. So that, that's the six classroom addition. And now we need to pull together um, kind of the interior design from Gibraltar and how to make sure that stays consistent with the six classroom addition design and marrying the two together. 
And then Kevin is spearheading our intermediate school. Uh, I think that you have maybe a, just a quick update of progress that's been made. The formal kickoff meeting with all the committee members is this coming Monday afternoon. That meeting is really going to kind of set the stage for expected outcomes for the remainder of the year to the time we get to June. Uh, at that time, we are going to learn of our first site visit. So we're heading east. We're going to uh, Riverside, which is out um, east of uh, Laporte, and then about 45 minutes east of Laporte, and then we'll come back for the PM session at Kessling Intermediate School in Laporte, make our way back home. So we're going to get two in that visit. We're also going to be hosting representatives from uh, Doom, or I'm sorry, Doomlin, uh, who are on a similar journey to us right now and have learned a lot of things along the way, are partnered with Gibraltar, they're working very closely with the Chief Educational Officer, Chris Kingery, who you guys know from Gibraltar, they're going to come here and work with our planning committee all as well. All of that's happening prior to spring break so that we can continue like choosing and, and really giving shape to those big stones, which are the determining factors that will define the identity so that in the year ahead, you start to make those nuanced, detailed decisions that really make that a special place around all of the things that will be um, a part of being a student in the intermediate school. Okay. And that's all I have for the superintendent's report. All right. Thank you. Staff recognition. Yeah. So, uh, when you go in reverse order here on the uh, video, the first one up is we recognize Kathy Clark, the bus driver of bus number 36. And um, you'll see a member of our audience uh, had a role to play. This video is playing on the TV using airplay. Oh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so you're not laughing at me. <laughs> Let's get the volume here. Uh, I might need some guidance. Any troubleshooting? Bottoms <laughs> up all the way. I heard it earlier. Yeah. yeah. Try hitting it. It works okay when you turn your head sideways. <laughs> <laughs> hey, schools! Hey, staff! Hey, hey, hey! Attention! Attention! So the last line there was, um, teachers deserve so much credit, they are educating the future. And so, thank you, Mrs. Johnson, for her. That was so fun, I just picked wonderful big videos. I didn't know you had to go to school, I knew that. 
<laughs> and then our final one is Nancy Arnold, Oak Hill Elementary's uh, Title I interventionist. All right, so that's my good. Oh, <laughs> yes, and those are three staff recognitions. Those are awesome. Excellent. Yeah. Appreciate that. Love seeing those. Board member report. Anybody? We had a couple that went to Indianapolis on Tuesday. Yep, me and uh, Katie went down there right early. And, um, it was uh, good to go down there. It seemed we heard from two different panels of um, senators and some legislators, and they spoke on things that are going on in the, in the state house now. And they gave out a, a big booklet of bill, like every single uh, bill that has to do, do with education. and. Um, there was one, was, was that center? For the early childhood development? Yes. He was very for educating early childhood development and yeah. keep pushing it to try to get it get it to go through and and um, everything else was seen pretty There's, pretty a, there's record amounts of funding going to education for the state this year, how it's gonna all play out and work into all of these bills is yet to be determined, but um, they are pushing great funds to us, so we'll see how we get it. There's a little asterisk to that, um, and we'll definitely keep our fingers crossed. What our general public um, sometimes doesn't know behind the scenes is one of the things being touted is uh, the elimination of textbook fees. Mm -hmm. That's huge, right? Every parent, that's a big chunk of change. But in the past couple of months, the word on the street, the, the amount of money allocated is approximately what, $150 per student in the state. And that that does not co cover all of the cost. So where does that money come from? It comes then out of the, the pot of money um, that the school's then responsible for. So this year might be a record amount of funding for schools, but if there's another year and that goes away, you can see how school districts can get impacted by that. So um, we hope for the best. That would be great for the whole state, It'd be great for parents. It just, uh, there's a part B to the story. We hope the part B plays out. Well, and as you say, the asterisk, however they determine, you know, that that record funding goes might not always end up to us either because of the types of students we have and where we fall on those different state right. criteria. But and as I we're running a referendum, that's why I'm sharing it because it's a good talking point to engage our public in. And there's other legislation that is counterproductive to education. Senate Bill 305, I believe, is one of them where they're taking the dollars that we normally would use for our education dispersing that to other educational entities, charter schools, public schools, or that private schools, etc. That doesn't seem to have many legs. Pardon me? I'll tell you, that one didn't seem to have many legs. I hope it doesn't, so but if the, it does take off, it's going to really hurt us. The, the change in, in how they might fund things has a little bit more popularity, but that one doesn't right. seem to have So there are 371 school districts, or schools, that get, receive state funding, 83 of which are charters Non, or virtual or something as part of that as well. So when they say K-12 education is getting a bumper year of money, a portion of that will go to those 
young folks as well in those charters and brochures. Cool. Well. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for going down. Thank you. I hope it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to run into any of our local um, legislatures? There was one from, I mean, he was not for us, but he was from Gary that seen us at. Dr. Smith? Maybe? Yeah. Vernon Smith? Yep. yep. Was, he, he was the one that spoke, right? No. He spoke quite often. Um, he had very bad yeah. things to say. Um, been around a long time. He taught a lot of the administrator administrator courses at IUM. Oh, okay. That's many administrators. Um, yeah, he's very passionate about education and funding, and he's been around long enough that he knows it takes time for each thing to get where it needs to be. For sure. Um, I do want to also just say, um, being in on the construction call last week, um, the representative Scott from. Um, or from Skillman. Um, I was really impressed with his continuing to um, remember and focus on our, our total overall amount and keeping the conversation that um, we need to not waste time with too lofty of ideas and really focus on um, keeping projects within the budget. So I just think that, that we've got a great team. Scott's been on for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got great knowledge it was nice having you and Dr. Cleefish join us. Yep. Alrighty. Moving on. Approved the minutes of the meeting held Thursday, February 9th, 2023. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor by saying aye. 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 All opposed by saying nay. Motion passes. Approved personnel report dated Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. Make a motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion passes. To approve the increase in hourly rate of pay for the school resource officers and security officer to $35 per hour, effective February 13th, 2023, based on the recent action taken by the Lowell FOP Lodge 186. Make a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I do have a question. How does that work? We have grants to, to fund them in school, correct? And now still will fit within yes. the grant. Yes, okay. We started the grant, we actually started the SRO program late, so there are funds that we can use. So we're good on. Right. Uh, anybody else got anything on it? All in favor by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion passes. All right. Say that Cedar Lake is paying thirty dollars an hour, so this is gives us a good advantage. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. One thing I left out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We're getting on the down scale. <coughs> uh, approved the cancellation cancellation of the state. Or stale data checks. Oh. Yes. Included in your packet was a list of all checks that are two years out of date that haven't been cashed as of December 31st, 2022. This is a yearly thing that we do. State Board of Accounts allows us to do that as long as the board approves those checks. We've made attempts to contact those folks. We've spoken to them and they've said, well, I'll look into it. And we called and sent letters as well. Um, so, yes, these checks are stale, and what happens then is once you approve this, you're able to receive those funds back into the fund that it was drawn from. Free money. <laughs> All righty. There's a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, cancel the stale data checks. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion passes. Number two, approve the following vehicles as worthless and authorized disposal of said vehicles through the Stans Auto Salvage, a 2003 Buick, a 2005 Volkswagen, and a and three 2011 Think Electric vehicles. Yes. Are these vehicles from the auto department? Yes, they are. Yeah, they've been part of the auto program um, donations here, and they. They're either unrepairable or 
lived their life and been used over and over again. Uh, those three EV cars were donations from probably when you were here. Uh, back to we didn't have EV back then. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, those cars in particular, um, when you uh, take those for salvage, uh, you actually end up having to pay for it because of the issues with the um, charging systems on those that they have to deal with. So stands and the relationship that our um, auto teacher Don Favors has with them, was a, he was able to work out a deal where they're actually paying us for those cars if we package them all together. So we have no um, expense related to those EV cars to get rid of those. Uh, he spoke to Lavinia Northwest, they have six, seven of those cars, and they're sitting on them just because they don't want to pay to get rid of them. So we've got a great deal. Okay. What does that think electric is <laughs> Okay. Like that tiny little one. Are those those little things? Yeah, over at the high school or parks. Yeah. yeah. You know, two of them in a parking I mean, you should know. I thought they were like a vehicle guy, right? Yeah, mine's a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't say think electric. Is that what they're actually. They're, they are, yeah, electric vehicles. Yeah. The size of this table. They're like golf carts. Yeah, I, yeah they are. I didn't know what they were. My wife asked me, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Small car? <laughs> Go karts? All right. I'll make the motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion passes. All right, number three. Approved the initiation of the chess club at the Lowell High School that would be sponsored by the Lowell High School teacher, Mr. Beckshire, to begin during the third quarter of the 22-23 school year. We actually have Mr. Berkshire in our yeah, audience so, today. Um, Micah came and talked to me at school. Uh, he and some of his friends wanted to start a chess club. They asked me if I'd be interested in sponsoring it. Do uh, you want to speak about that at all? Or... Kind of what your vision is. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't want me to put you on the spot, I can, I can talk. No, I, I, I can say something. Um, okay. So recently, we noticed that a lot of people have been really interested in chess. Uh, like my peers. Um, chess clubs are very common. And we don't have one for some reason. Um, I feel like it would be a good way to uh, uh, get people to stay interested in chess. I mean, like even beyond when it just like uh, isn't as popular, like mainstream right now. Uh, and it can help people lose their time to have fun along the way. Become aces in chess. <laughs> well, I have to say I was so excited to see this come through. Um, my son, when we lived in Virginia, was in elementary school and he did the chess club. And it's become a family thing that we all learned how from him, learned how to play chess. Um, and I just have seen growth in him um, through playing chess. And like you said, it's a way to create friends and pass your time doing something other than video games and phones. So I, I am very excited about this and good job on your part for taking the initiative. I know that's not always easy and thank you for you know sponsoring, sponsoring as well. Yeah. Been sitting here for over an hour <laughs> waiting for us to get to your section here. I'd love to learn how to play chess. But I've barely mastered checkers so <laughs> I don't know if I can learn but I'd love to. Well I'll make a motion. All right. I'll start. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion passes. Congratulations. Join them Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays at 7 30 in the morning after breakfast from across the street. Come right over after chess. Wait, what days? Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, right? Yep, from 7 30 to 8 15, right? But I only eat breakfast on Fridays. <laughs> Can we move it to Friday morning? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight. And um, obviously, we made you earn <laughs> the spot by waiting. So, sorry. You can come in late tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Please Appreciate don't feel it. obligated to stay. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to see it's, that you guys were able to get that. All right. So, um, number one, accept a donation from Nick Shoot Baum. Bail Master of Crown Point, Indiana, in the form of materials valued at $1,500 to 
we used the Lowell High School welding and machining classes. No, number two, accept a donation from Laura Whitefield of Lake Village, Indiana, in the form of 36 cents. Buddies valued at $1,260 to be used in the Calmy Corner and Oak Hill Elementary School classroom. Number three, accept a donation from the Lake Prairie Elementary School PTO in the amount of $403.63 to help support the second grade study trip. I'll make a motion to accept all three donations. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion passes. What's a Cincy? It's a company that sells stuff like Tupperware. It's uh, like smelling. So they're like a stuffed animal and you put the set packet in it and they smell good and you can cuddle them. That's what those are. Calm down. Yeah. I need, so a, I need a box of them for my office. <laughs> <laughs> four or five of them. Alrighty. Safety and security. Say safety. She's not nervous. Just look at That's it. I think we have one. Okay. I have a few props. Okay. I'll have as great of music as John did, but. I've pushed Stacy out of her comfort zone. Uh, what's so that? Be easy. Wait, what? What's that? No, no. <laughs> So I did a presentation before, but we have a new board, so I wanted to reintroduce myself and let you guys know a little bit about me. So I don't know if many of you know that I graduated from the University of Michigan, so I'm not in Indiana. Um, I didn't grow up here. My roots aren't here, but um, I do love it. Um, I, I graduated with an education degree, decided that I wanted to go in law enforcement, so changed after I graduated. I graduated from the police academy, and um, when I came to Indiana, I became a part of the Indiana School Resource Officer. Um, I'm a member of that organization because I am also a part of the NASRO in, um, member, which is like the whole nation of school resource officers. So I wanted to keep that membership up. I was an area police officer for Eastern Michigan University, which is kind of like an SRO, but it's at the college level. So I was in charge of like um, programming and stuff in the residence halls. I sat on advisory boards with like the Dean of Students. I was a school resource officer at Milan Area Schools, schools for several years. Um, before I hired in at this job, my last seven years, I was at the Center for Forensic Psychiatry which was very interesting. I learned a lot about mental illness. Um, I worked with the criminally insane, the not guilty by any reason of insanity. And recently, I just got my Indiana Safety Specialist certification. Um, I also attended uh, QPR Gatekeeper for suicide prevention. I, I got my certification for that. Stratagos was part of a training that 12 of us from the district went to to become instructors. Um, active intruder shooter instructors for the district. Our goal was to train everybody in the whole district that this becomes a part of something we do every single year, that everybody stays up on school safety. Um, our subs, everybody, they know that this is something that we do. I attended with our counselors, um, the Geminis. It was a bullying prevention program. It was great. It was a whole day thing. I think there was close to 600 people at it. Yeah. It was, where did we go? Nope, it wasn't here. I don't remember. I'm in Is that where it was at? I don't I even think remember. So. It was huge. It was great. Really, really good. Great speakers. We learned a lot. Um, and one of the speakers was someone that was bullied when he was younger. He gave some really good, you know, ideas and presentations and things to bring back to your schools to help with this. And so it was very good training to attend. The top of it's a little bit cut off, but I was hired in uh, April of 2022. And once I um, arrived in Tri Creek, my feet were hitting the ground running. I think everybody will tell you that. <laughs> uh, 
Um, my goal was definitely to establish relationships. That's my big thing. I want people to know who I am. You know, I'm here to help. How can I make things better? So I started with the Lowell Police Department. Um, I met with the Lowell Fire Department, EMS. Um, I became part of the Lake County Safe School Commission on their board. Um, the Indiana Secured School Safety Grant was able to interact with Tessa Reed. She was our um, kind of like our liaison between the grants. She helped if we had any questions, you know, as far as using money for the grant, what can we use it for, you know, what are the their um, standards and stuff. So was able to, you know, uh, build some relationships with, with those people with that. Um, I was deputized to the Lake County Sheriff's Department. When I came in in April and May, I ended up sending out a district-wide uh, safety survey. I wanted to see what were safety concerns in the district with the kids. Interesting thing that I really want to say about this was this was right after the Texas shooting. And one of my questions was, how safe do you feel in our schools? Asked them a lot of questions on that. I was very surprised the kids said that they felt safe. E even after seeing all the stuff that happened in Texas, I thought that, you know, might skew the, the survey a little bit. But they all said they felt pretty safe, so I was that was great to hear that. Um, I analyzed uh, student discipline data. I met with um, one of the IT people. They helped me set up graphs so that I could see what were some discipline problems we're having in each school. It runs, it shows me, I can see school by school, I can look district wide, really nice tool to have, some areas that maybe we need to improve in. Um, I helped coordinate traffic signage for um, high school graduation. When I came in, we had to finish out the 21-22 safety grant, so I finished that out. And then I had to submit the 22-23 grant. We held our first ever conducted uh, first, rock, first responders meeting, which was great. We did a tabletop at the high school. We had the sheriff's department there. We had, um, you know, we had people from EMS, from uh, our local police department. We had administrators there. We kind of all talked and said, you know, what would we do if this happened in our school? And I think we learned a lot. They, the, you know, law enforcement learned a lot from us. I think. Maybe they didn't realize how much we were preparing. They're prepared, but how much the school is preparing. And you know, we learned stuff from them. They brought up some ideas. You might want to think about this, or maybe look at that. So we definitely want to hold more of these. They said that they loved it, and they, they want to have that kind of a partnership with Tri Creek. So we will continue doing that for sure. Um, we hosted a school town hall safety meeting. That was also right after the Texas shooting. We invited Chief Babel from the Sheriff's Department. We had um, Chief Wiesman from Lowell PD so that they could talk to our community and let them know, you know, we will respond. Our response will look very different than that. Not that you ever want to put somebody down that's in your profession, but they wanted to reassure our parents and our community that if something happens in Dry Creek, they will be running in the building and they will be reacting. So I, I thought it was great that we had them there. People could you know, voice their opinion and, and feel rest, you know, feel, feel safer that they are going to react. Um, we implemented the three outs, active intruder protocol within Tri Creek, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, we coordinated with the Sheriff's Department. They were able to get a grant um, through Stratosite, and it's an actual mapping system where we got together with our first responders, um, and I'll show you what that looks like in my slideshow so you can get an idea. And then one of our big things was we launched, we launched the Say Something Anonymous report system and the Say Promise Club. And uh, I would definitely talk more about those. And this is just showing you that I was you know, deputized by the Lake County Sheriff's Department. I didn't realize I was the first one they did that with. I thought this was something normal here. Um, I guess it's not. So I feel privileged that they let me do that. Um, you know, they did the background check on me, verified that I truly do work for Tri Creek. I just didn't want to be deputized. <laughs> um, and I have to shoot at the Sheriff's Department quarterly. So actually, I'm getting ready to shoot March 1st. Uh, and they want to make sure that I pass the course, then I'm qualified to carry a weapon. And it gives me law enforcement authority when, whenever I'm in a school, if I need to react. 
So the Lake County Safe Schools Commission, um, I love going to these meetings. We meet quarterly, we learn a lot. Um, there's quite a few people there from all the different school districts. Um, we talk about training opportunities, legal updates, things that are up and coming that are changing in the schools. Um, we are able to network with each other. The SROs are there, the safety and security directors, coordinators. Um, we actually have a couple building grounds guys that show up from Lake Ridge. So pretty, pretty diverse group. And it, it is a good way to find out, you know, what are other schools doing? What issues are they seeing? We talk about baby. It's every school district. We all talk about how, oh yeah, that's definitely a problem everywhere. Um, established a partnership with Lake County Sheriff's Department. This was huge, and Lowell Police Department. We've really been talking a lot, the Sheriff's Department and Lowell, and really wanting to build that partnership with tri Creek. We want them in our schools. Um, so Chief Balbo, you'll see his uh, deputies walking through our schools, and he said that he has put in, has put in. if they're not busy, that's part of their shift. They walk through our schools. He wants them to know them if they respond, um, that they kind of feel they're familiar with them. They're not just walking into a building that they've never been in before. So I appreciate him for doing that. And uh, Chief Wiesman has been amazing from the Lowell Police Department with our safety grant we were able to recruit um, and secure funding we our goal was six officers we are up to 12. we have 12 part-time sros they all went through the sro training and they are doing amazing in our schools way above what my expectations were um, so i'm really excited that chief weisman worked with us on that he's been a good partner with getting them into the schools this just shows you some of the fun photos um, with the kids, you know, they're out on the playground with them. They ask them to come eat a meal with them. This was at Thanksgiving. They're in the classrooms, they read books. They're out on recess, like what a great partnership. Like they're building that, that trust with the kids and you know, they're not afraid when they see an officer now. They're greeting them when they, you know, come in from their, they're getting dropped off or buses. So just a really good program. So this one I'm very, very proud of. I only, I only had two samples I dropped off. This was just released on February 21st. Um, a school shooting was actually stopped by using the Say Something anonymous reporting. And this was huge for our district to be able to partner with Sandy Hook. Um, it's a 24 seven, 365 day anonymous report system. This isn't just a form you fill out and somebody's gonna look at it the next day or at night. Somebody's actually on the other end of that. There's an actual crisis center. They're trained professionals. Um, each of our schools that are involved in this, so we, we have the middle school and the high school, because it kind of goes by age level. They don't feel elementary you know, are at that age to be able to do this kind of reporting. So we have a district team, we have a high school team, a middle school, and a Title IX response team. So depending on what the call is, what school it's at, all those people get notified. Um, and you can go into this and you can see exactly what the person is typing, what they've said, if they've called, you see the whole conversation. So it's, it's pretty fast, you're able to you know, take care of things. Since we started this, and I believe we started this like October 26th, we've had 23 tips come in, some pretty good ones. Um, the counselors have been amazing, our staff's been amazing, right away taking care of things, getting kids help that need it. Um, some of the calls have been, you know, can be self-harm, if a student thinks that somebody's gonna harm somebody else, you know, they're not afraid to report it, which is great. All the kids had to go through training for us to implement this, like it was a pretty big process, it took us several months. So all the staff had to go through training, all the kids had to go through training, and then those of us that are on these teams, we had to actually go through like a trial, like a fake test, and make sure that we knew what we were doing. And they send us all of our posters and, and you know everything that we need. It also comes with a K through 12 um, SEL program, and they've actually used some of the lessons already in the elementaries, which is great. And the thing that's awesome about this, this is a free program. And I don't know why other schools don't do it. We, when we signed up for this, we were only the second school in Indiana. I don't know how many more have joined since then, um, but I think that's amazing 
it's it's such a great um, when people think about security and safety this this right here is huge for kids to be able to feel safe and report stuff so low middle school so the other part of the Sandy Hook program is called students against violence everywhere the club advisor here is Kim Kilmer she's amazing she's done a great group what she did was she she is using her junior L club as the Save Promise Club and the, the Junior L Club together. And this just shows you like different things that are on the school at the middle school. You know, boards about kindness, bullying. The Save picture is saying hi in different languages. So it's really about like, you know, diversity and unity and inclusion. Again, just some great things that I just, unless you really walk around, some people don't really pay attention. I started walking around like, I really need to take pictures of this stuff. So like in the gym, you know, the mural that's in the gym, I love that. You know, make it a great day or not, the choice is yours. Um, in the gym, the kids just put up RDP. Every, everyone is welcome here. I think that's great. By some of our bathrooms, we have, you know, we do not allow bullying here. We have a disability poster. Um, and then I, I definitely love this one because I was an athlete my whole life. And, you know, it is very important how parents raise their kids. It's not just about having an athletic ability. It's about making that child, you know, mentally tough and listening to their coaches and wanting to learn and get better. And so I love that our gyms in this district have that. I think that says a lot about Tri Creek. And again, I put those up there because people don't think offhand that that's about safety, but those things really are. They do affect safety in the district by having those signs up. Batteries, oh, this was, a, this was a big one. So we have, I'm gonna start at the bottom just to give you an idea. We have 140 radios in the school district. Um, they're used by administrators. Um, we have them in you know, our OC room, recess in the cafeteria, a lot of radios. The batteries had not been replaced in a while, so we had to go through the whole district and replace all the batteries, any of the radios that weren't transmitting get those all working because these are important. Staff need these when there's an emergency. So we were able to get all the radios fixed. We purchased new radios. We replaced all the batteries. Um, we're gonna be doing more training on the radio so people know the capacity that they do. They actually do a lot more than what I think a lot of staff know, know that they do. Um, and our maintenance is gonna be kept up better on the radios. Um, we found out through the company that at the end of the school year, we should actually be taking them off chargers. Chargers, they shouldn't be sitting all summer. So that's actually gonna save the battery life. We shouldn't have to replace them as much by doing that. So at the end of the school year, we'll have all the staff turn them in. We'll go through the radios, make sure that they, you know, they all are working properly for the new school year. This was another thing that is huge to me. I'm all about safety. I used to train crossing guards at my last district. First thing I did when I came out here, I wanted to see where kids walk to our schools. Well, Three Creeks was one of the schools that I sat across the street, which was great because the, the staff was watching me and they didn't know me yet, I'm brand new here. And I'm sitting across the street in the parking lot and they were calling in because there was a, somebody sitting out there for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so they did their job. That's great. So then I come out and I'm like, hi, I'm you know, the safety and security coordinator. And they're like, we wondered who that was. I said I was watching your crosswalks. Um, very dangerous. Parents are coming up, they're jamming the brakes on, the stop bars are not painted very well, and there's actually not a true crosswalk for kids. They should be thick white lines going across. So the cars come up actually see that. So Jason has been amazing. He's been working with the town. We were figuring out whose responsibility was. The town said we will be taking care of that in the spring. So huge. I want the kids to be safe. A lot of them walk from that apartment complex. Um, they have to come across one and then go across the other crosswalk. So those will be taken care of. <coughs> Stratosite. The Sheriff's Department ended up getting a huge grant. They asked all the schools in Lake County, would you like to be a part of this? It's no cost to you. And it's a mapping system for a critical incident. And what they said was, we want you to get together with your first responders. You sit down and you figure out for each school Where's your unified command post gonna be? Where's your law enforcement gonna stage? Where's the fire trucks gonna stage? If you had to have a med, med back fly in, where could they fly in at? Where do you want your media at? You don't want your media right on top of where your incident is. So we all got together and we sat down 
and we said, okay, this is where we're gonna put this, we're gonna put that. So all of our schools are in this mapping system. The Sheriff's Department has access to it and all of our first responders. And it may change, like everything, you know, totality of circumstances, we don't know what could happen, but at least we are, we have a plan in place. Um, this was our active intruder training where 12 of us went through in the district and went through this training. And we are still training people in the district. We are, um, March 1st, we're taking the chart well. Um, the whole staff and the whole district is going through it. I mean, they're a part of Tri Creek. They're in our schools. They should know how to react if something happens. So we are excited that they are giving us the day to take them through a presentation, to take them through the you know, kitchens to know what to do if something happens. So we'll be doing that. This is a poster that our safety team worked on. Um, we wanted to come up with something that was simple that staff could remember if something happened in the building. And we came, this, these, these are the three words for um, the three outs training, lockout, get out, take out. And we made it very simple under each one, you know, what, what options you have. These are options that you have to do if something happens. Um, eventually, with the superintendent's approval, that'll go on our website and um, we'll have a few posters made up. So, just a reminder to staff. This is another great project that our staff are working on at elementary schools. When we went through the active intruder training, they talked about um, elementary kids and keeping it simple with them. So, if we go into a lockdown, having the kids know what is the safe Where's a safe wall in that classroom? So the teachers are gonna hang up. Some of the classrooms are already done. So these are for Lake Prairie, they're the Tigers. And this is their logo. And when you go into their classrooms, if there is an inside threat, the Tiger will be on the wall that the teacher knows this is the safe wall for an inside threat. All my kids, I'm gonna tell them, go to the Orange Tiger and they're gonna all line up. If there was a threat outside, it's gonna be different where the kids would line up. So the tiger is gonna be a different color so the teacher can say, go to the blue tiger. This is our safe wall. So our goal is that Oak Hill, Three Creeks, and Lake Prairie, every classroom is gonna have this. It'll have their little logo of each school to help the kids in the training. And it makes it not, you know, it makes it at their level. Nightlock. This was a huge project that we've been working on. Only one school in Indiana has been able to do a waiver with a fire marshal, and that is Noblesville, and we all know that they had a shooting there. Um, so our goal was, we wanna be able to lock in later as much as we can. Um, the first thing we started with was making sure every teacher in this district teaches with their door locked. We had all of these made they're on every door, inside or outside, and the teachers know we're gonna walk around, we're gonna pull on your door handle. And it, this is like the first, this costs no money, this is the first thing. If you teach with your door locked, you know, your chances. If you look at all the shootings, doors were unlocked. So the teacher, teachers have been great. We've randomly been going around and pulling on doors, and they've all been locked, which is great, which I saw you had to unlock a door in that presentation, <laughs> so that was good. So, Corey reached out to this company, Nightlock, and said, hey, we would like to do this in our district. Would you be willing to send us samples so we can put them on some doors and we want to see how it works? And they responded back right away, said absolutely. They shipped us several of their products. Um, and then Jason and I sat down and had a meeting with the fire marshal. And we kind of told him why we wanted this. Um, they wanted us to use a different device but our comeback was, it has to be something simple under stress. We have, um, we have teachers that have disabilities. So this, whatever we get has to work for anybody. And for an elementary kid, an elementary kid may be able to easily just drop it. You know, we don't want something that's hard that has to go under a door, you have to expand it, it's just too much. And so after we pitched our story, Tony said, if this is what you decide to go with, I'll, I'll do the waiver. So huge. So I just want to let you know we're excited about this. I don't know where, where it'll go, um, but they did send us um, a kit. And so these would actually go next to every classroom door. They would be mounted in the same place every classroom so the teacher would know. 
And then all you would do is just open it up. And this is what would be in it. There's a mount that goes flush on the door, one that goes on the door, and this little thing, this goes right in and slides in and locks down, just like that picture. And you cannot move that door. So just another layer you know, of protection. Um, Michigan legislation passed a, uh, a bill that overrides the whole state of Michigan all fire marshals. You can install a temporary device for a lockdown procedure. I hope Indiana goes to that, that would be great. I'd love to see that. I really think every state should. So. So did they approve it then? For us? Yes. Yes. Yep, he said, when you are ready to go, I'll sign whatever waiver I need to sign. So. Excellent. Yeah, so we were excited. Like I said, Noblesville is the only other one we know they were able to get the waiver. This is just to show you when I was talking about the discipline graph. This is what I get to see every every day. It runs at 2 a.m. And I can see the whole district, different things that are going on by our reporting, by teachers and staff, or I can break it down and just look at graphs of each building. So and just another. At 2 I, it runs at 2 a.m. every day. I'm on there looking. <laughs> Coming soon. Okay, so um, I have to give kudos to um, Terry over here cruising amazing she labeled the inside of all of her doors with numbers of the classroom when the fire marshal came through he said i love that because i'm inside the room and i keep asking you what room am i in we do have it on the things that hang by the door but if you're at your desk and it's an emergency and maybe it's a sub and you don't know like what room am i in so our goal is to have these stickers put inside every area, whether you're an office or whatever. So if you have to get on the phone and make a call, I'm in room, blah, blah, blah. Also what she did underneath it is she put um, where the emergency personnel, what door they should enter, which I think is great. So then on top of that, you tell them what door to come in. You have it on the outside windows, so for something. No outside windows, but that's another thing. I know we did a lot of that back in yeah, Michigan. So hopefully that is something that the safety team is working on. Um, Strategos are active intruder training. We're, we're still training people in the district on that. Mm -hmm. The um, NISEC is taking over 100 of our staff eventually. We're lining up training dates to take them through CPI. So that is in the works and coming soon. Some more coming soon, district-wide safety plan. We've been working with our stakeholders. Um, we have several of them out in the community that have offered to be rally points, which is, which is great. So each school will know if they take off running out of a school, where can I run to? Um, Jay and I are gonna work on putting together an emergency call out list. So those, um, those rally points will actually get a call saying, you're gonna be looking for us because something's happened. And we want that, we want them to be ready. So we are working on that district-wide safety plan. Um, we started offering Stop the Bleed um, training once a month for staff or anybody that wants to sign up for it. The goal would be if we could get every staff in the district trained would be amazing. Even if they don't use it here, they may use it outside the school. Um, Kevin gave us a great example that it was just used. So, yep. So that is our goal. Um, yeah. The instructor, Todd, he's amazing. He's working on trying to get us more Stop the Bleed kits. Right now, we only have them in our AED boxes. The goal is we'd love to have them in all of our fire boxes where all the um, fire extinguishers are. There would be a Stop the Bleed kit. So we're working on that. Is this like a tourniquet? Yep, yeah. Um, we went to a training that was amazing. Um, there was representatives from each school and it was for behavioral threat assessment management and suicide assessment teams, setting those up in your district, each school, and really having communication between all of us so we know what's going on. If a kid leaves one school and comes to a next, we're all in the loop. So that is up and coming. We're putting these teams together. Um, 
My safety specialist training I just went to, they have a lot of the ATF bomb threat assessment protocol. A lot of that is different now. We have old forms. They've updated those. We're going to update those forms. Um, they're actually recommending that uh, teachers in their classrooms don't evacuate right away. They're saying lots of times they're finding out you could evacuate into a danger zone. Where you're at, stay right now. Um, teaches the teacher how to actually search their room because they know the room's best. They know if something's out of place. If you bring your law enforcement in first to search, they don't really know what's out of place. So a lot of things have changed, so we want to definitely make sure that we are up to date on all that. Emergency bucket kits, a lot of the teachers have asked for this. I was told we do have emergency buckets that were um, ordered last year. So our goal is to get those stocked and go into classrooms. If we went into a lockdown and you were in a lockdown like Lake Central for hours, and you know you had to use a restroom or you know we would have those in, in the classrooms um, our substitute teacher safety training video this was um, Hamilton School District they brought one of their safety instructors to our training and they actually each school makes a video and I love the idea and it says hi I'm the principal assistant principal Dean these are the front office staff they introduce themselves um, this is our, you know, this is our safety protocol. This is what we do. So all your subs are on the, on the same page and they know. And they're not walking into a building not knowing who the front office staff are. Especially the secretaries. I mean, I joke. I say, that, you know, you have principals, but really the secretaries run the school. So I want them to know who they are. Uh, our fire and EMS, they do have access to our buildings. We have the knock box, but we want to speed that up. We want them to have prox cards in all their rigs and in the ambulances. Our police already, our state police, our you know, uh, low PD and the sheriff's department, they all have prox cards so they can you know, get in our schools pretty quick. Um, we, are, we are working on our crisis kits for a reunification site. We do have a reunification site. Um, we don't tell what that is to the community. But we are very fortunate that someone stepped up and said, we want to work with Tri Creek. We want to be a reunification site. And so um, we will be getting together with them, with the administration and everybody to go over, you know, what is this going to look like? What is everybody's roles? And then last but not least, um, I want to do updates to the safety and security page. Jay, Jay and I had talked about this. I want to add like, you know, mental health resources on there. Um, Vaping. I want to do some, put some vaping stuff on there for parents if they need help with their kids. Uh, stop arm violations. This is huge. I would love for us to put stats on there. The videos, amazing. The videos I see all the time. Um, I mean, I can't even believe how many people drive through our bus arms every day. So I would like to, I would like the community to really see this. And if we could block out whatever we need to block out license plates. But see that these kids are, you know, walking and really pay attention. So I'd love to like be able to keep that updated. Like this is how many violations we had this month. At our training, they said I mean, Meemeyer has Meemeyer. actually got a bill proposed for not by our violations, but it sounded like it wasn't going anywhere, right? Yeah. Oh, you is just, so he's a local. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's so that. so many people go through them. Is and there, they, is there anything that is done with those? Yes, I was just going to say, here's the great partnership with Chief Weisman. So John sends the videos to Chief Weisman. He sends them to me. Chief Weisman sends us both an email. They were just cited. They were just cited. As long as they have the evidence, they can yeah. do it. But the so, word of mouth, it doesn't cut it. Yeah, so our videos on the buses are amazing. They have, like, they come off the side of the arm. They're on the back of the bus. You get the person come in front. And then you get the yeah, so it's really, really good. And they've been writing a lot of tickets. So. Going back to law enforcement, especially the police, do you have, or do they have access in a severe emergency, a gun, uh, an intruder with a weapon, access of all the video cameras? Uh, uh, her, Old PD does. Uh, they have the software, uh, as well as uh, SRO Burkus has that directly on there. Uh, Lowell, or sorry, uh, Lake County, uh, they've had access for several years and they're starting a new program that is going to basically make it easier for them to be able to have a map up and right. be able to see those. Right, before they enter the building. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, what is it called? Yeah. Live, live time Real crime? time crime. Yeah. yeah. They're building an actual center. They're supposed to be breaking ground. I think this next month is supposed to be done by April. But they're talking about um, for the next school year, and they're trying to get as many school districts as they can. So well, they would. Schools don't want to do. We did it in Beaverton with Willow County, and it's phenomenal. But they don't use it every day. It's only for emergency right. situations. And you know, like radios, when right. the police officers come in our buildings, their radios don't work. Right. And when Lake Central, when that thing happened at Lake Central, they said it was chaos because nobody's radios work. Each other. Yeah. Right. So do we have a channel for the TV? Well, they they just told us that uh, that uh, Lake County. <coughs> is purchasing new radios that are capable of wireless yes. so they can utilize our wireless network okay. and they'll have credentials to get on to that so the minute they hit the building it switches yeah. over to our wireless and then they can get out yeah. so chief balboa i mean he's amazing he's very about school safety we're lucky he's really focusing on you know he wants quick response he wants officers to have as much information as they can before they get in, get to the building Great. yeah Any questions about anything I've done so far? Or? You can answer my question. Um, just to put things in perspective, a year ago we were interviewing for her position. <laughs> All of that's been done since April. I have lots more to do. <laughs> I know, well, Mr. Hayden, you had. Yeah, 2 a.m. I'm looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Hayden, I know you had some questions um, regarding drills. Uh, yeah, I, I'm friends with a, a Lake County Sheriff, and he said they do a lot of drills, active shooter training at Ileana. And he was, he made the comment to me that they talk about going a little, but they, they were both on. So that, I, no one's I don't, I, don't, I, don't I, don't I don't know that that would have been with the current administration. I don't know. So yeah. um, do you, if you've got the name, maybe give it to Stacy. I'm going to, I'm actually going um, March. We did one. Yeah, March 9th, I'm going to Clark Middle School. I'm taking two staff with me, and they're actually doing a full live training, and I'm going to be an evaluator, which is kind of cool. And then the other, the other two staff that are coming with me are going to be observers to watch, like how all of this unfolds. So it's going to be, that's, I was really excited they invited us to that. Is that like firing and... Like full, like, like actors, all that. Yeah, okay. the whole thing. So, um, yeah, Jason, like when you walk into yeah. high school, it's like you walk around one corner and you're totally lost. <laughs> <laughs> Our school's like, unique. I went, it's never I, I went to and then we went through the we went through the the ballet room there. And then we came up by the gym. I'm like, well, this is fine. Right <laughs> <laughs> well, just to tell you, I, I just remembered this too. Now that you just brought that up. So um, this summer, I actually trained with Little PD. They did they did their active shooter training at Three Creeks. This year, I think they're gonna we're gonna do it again, and they're gonna go to the high school. And I believe your husband's gonna be a part of that too. I think because Corey had talked about that. He's always here to help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're we're, they're trying to make sure they practice in each of our schools right. how they're how they're gonna respond. And they had a crime scene investigator do a presentation at the high school. Mm -hmm. So the Indiana State Police, one of their sergeants, reached out to Corey, and um, they said, "You know, this is our first time in your high school." Walked in, was like, "Wow, we need to know this school." Several of us live in Lowell, and um, so Corey's putting together packets for them. They want maps and they want tours. So he's he said, "I'll, I'll take care of all that." So I'm, I'm excited, like I said, the partnership, the more that we get that from, you know. Before a situation. Right, exactly. Yeah, very nice to know that yeah. all this is going on, all of our work here, what you're doing. Yeah, we've got, it's not, I mean, I've got a great team and everybody's helped with that. I mean, it takes a lot of people to get all this together and accomplish everything that I've been working on. Well, we are fortunate to have you here and you know, you. moving here from Michigan as well. So. Definitely, this puts that all into perspective. We definitely are lucky to have you at this facility. Wanted to come here and make a difference, so hopefully that's, I'm doing that, and I continue to keep making you know, the district as safe as I can. Oh, I did want to give a kudos out to Ashley Anderson and to, um, what's her name? Krista? Krista? Krista, yes. 
again, when I talk about safety in our district, it's not, it's not all about what people think, metal detectors, having a gun, all this. It's doing all the preventative stuff that they're doing. Mm -hmm. They do an amazing job with that PBIS, second step. They're doing a kindness lesson plan. I mean, those are the things that are gonna make a difference when kids are coming up to our school system. That's what's gonna stop the bullying. That's what's gonna prevent kids from feeling like I don't belong and I wanna hurt somebody, so. And provide them the empathy and concern also to utilize oh, yeah. the Save Some, Something uh, Sandy Hook program. That's incredible that we've had that many kids feel comfortable yeah. utilizing. And we just started it. Since it's just begun. That's and and yeah. for bullying prevention, all that stuff that relates to the kids, parents need to know what's going on. We certainly don't want to see what happens in the news all the time about kids committing suicide right. and then all of a sudden litigation and all that stuff distracting yep. from what we should be doing. Let parents know that we have, you don't have to tell them all the details, but let them know that what you're doing and what your intentions are. That's a big thing. And some of the things I didn't even know until I, until I walk over there and I see they're doing these lesson plans. And, and I tell them, you guys are doing a great job because you are making our district safer by what you do. You know, everybody, like I said, everybody looks at doors and we need glass, we need this. No, you need to help the, the kids, you know. That, that's where it starts. Like, get to the root of it, not, we don't want to get to this end result. Right. And, you know, being retired, I get to watch a lot of TV and just the other day, this is, this is the superintendent Anderson. Uh, there was a superintendent, a school superintendent in Texas who carried and left it in the bathroom. I'm asking you don't carry your weapon and leave it in the bathroom. I won't leave it in the bathroom. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> I love you right away. <laughs> thank you so much. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great presentation. Yeah, thanks for hiring me and thanks for you know, letting me be able to do all these things. Glad to have you here. Yeah. Look forward to hearing you all. <laughs> you better get to sleep. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I don't have any public comment for non-related items. Uh, next meeting will be Thursday, March 9th. I'm assuming at 7. Yes. Should be. Anybody? I do have a question. So we are in the middle of scheduling and going through course requests. <clears throat> At the high school, this is a good challenge. Um, we have the need to actually add an additional full-time educator. And what that would do was take our current uh, carpentry trades teacher and put them in the field so that our students, advanced students could actually build a home beginning in August and finishing up in June in the community. But that requires then for us to hire a teacher to do the entry level. Uh, we got course requests back and I was informed today that even if we move forward with hiring an additional teacher, we will still have to turn away 50 students. It's that popular. So, That's awesome. Um, before we come to the board to request an additional full-time educator, we need to crunch some numbers. We need to see what our reimbursement would be from the CTE, from the state. Um, and then our hope is to come to the next board meeting, um, assuming all the numbers pan out, um, to request an additional teacher. Um, but I would like uh, to know if I had your support to go ahead and post the position just to see if there's any interest in garnering. We would not engage in any hiring process until the board would take action one way or the other. Um, so do we have any problems with just posting to garner applicant interest? Because if there's no interest, that's going to give us an indication of if you can't find a teacher, you can't move right. forward. With. Well, like you said before, it's good to get out there early and see what's out there. Right. What's our number of students per <coughs> class in that construction trade? It's small, isn't it? It's approximately uh, 13 to 15 kids. I think it's a little bit different. Uh, that might be the site. That's on the site. On the yeah, job the site. Video. And in class, it might be 15 to 17 mm -hmm. per class period. Would it be built like a, would it be like a habitat? 
home that they can really grow in? Yeah, it's like a bona fide certified home that will then turn around and be sold. Like a spec. I mean, the design done that for 20 something years. That's what I did. For Salisbury College, I used to teach all that, the building trades and all that. So, so once upon a time, <laughs> so once upon a time you served on the school board, and then you, and, and then you became an employee. <laughs> You're now back on the board. Maybe you would be this full time. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a conflict. A what? No, you, you'd have you to. You have to give up your seat. I did that once. But, we did. but no, I think there's a need for it. I mean, the, learning the skilled trade, especially like carpentry, that's a lifelong skill. I mean, that, that's phenomenal. I would support that too. Yes. Yeah. We need to keep turning them carpenters out. Okay. Cabinet Kyle, Kyle needs employees. <laughs> right, my employees are getting older. <laughs> you want to start teaching? No, no. <laughs> All right. Anything else? That's it. All right. We need to adjourn here.